Welcome to Crimson Guitars and Daily Guitar Draw and Dorset Guitar Museum, uh, etc. And I'm Ben Crow. I'm Sam Falloon. We're looking at a 30 grand 1954 first batch uh, Gretsch Chet Atkins uh, 6120T. Did I get the number right? I mm -hmm. did, 6120T. And then also a Japanese made, uh, this is about 1600 yeah. quid. Uh, limited edition, 125-year uh, anniversary uh, version of the same instrument. And this is available. You can get tickets to win this guitar on Daily Guitar Draw and Indeed. in the process help us to create, uh, well, the Dorset Guitar Museum, which is going to be absolutely epic. And we are going to be doing more reviews on this channel, looking at things completely from the point of view of a guitar builder rather than oh, that's a nice guitar it plays well this is what it sounds like uh, Sam is <laughs> our vintage nut you absolutely love vintage oh, stuff yeah. I mean yeah I'll take this one thank you very much yeah. Yeah. I've had more than a few people ask me if I could look the other way while that was uh, <laughs> you know, misappropriated yeah. shall we say it's gorgeous um, yeah okay well look let's let's uh, just very quickly if you haven't yet seen them we've spent uh, two or three videos uh, repairing and restoring and, and looking at this guitar. I've done a neck reset, uh, we've done a, um, the, the neck itself was all over the place and had bent uh, and needed to be fixed with heat. Um, some repair work underneath the nut, etc. A yeah. lot has happened to this guitar. So this beast is 3.1 kilograms, six pounds and 13 ounces. That's the vintage Gretsch, six pounds 13. This one, considerably more. Mm. Seven pounds eight, three point four kilograms. That is a difference. That is somewhat annoying because uh, this guitar is smaller, seventy point eight millimeters thick at the edge, and this one here, sixty three point nine, so sixty four millimeters, sixty four, or seventy one. Yeah. Let's completely redesign the guitar. Let's reduce the uh, resonating volume, the resonating chamber. The whole point of this guitar is to be a guitar and is to project and, and sing, yes? Mm. Yes? Yes. Yes? Yes. How's about we make it resonant in other ways? I'm feeling a little bit ranty today. Mm. These guitars are basically made out of plywood. Pretty much. Yeah. I love how in guitar building we uh, we look down, or we tend to look down, the zeitgeist looks down on veneer, for example. Yet we all love these vintage Gretches. We all love 335s, etc. Yeah. It's made out of multi-laminate veneers. And, you know, we're getting to a point where high-end acoustic guitars have got multi-laminate sides. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, actually, it's better. So, uh, I've jury-rigged up a... Uh, a basic micrometer here. I'm not sure if you can see that actually. There we go. It's magnet based and it'll give us a quick idea. Don't drop the magnets on the old guitar, Ben Crow. So essentially the, the magnets on the underside uh, go up and down. The ones inside tell me how, how thick it is. And this is a, a very even thickness all the way along. But this instrument is designed to be to be resonant and to work as an acoustic instrument. So we've gone from an eighth of an inch. They've literally doubled the thickness of the, of the top. And I understand why they're doing what they're doing. Because this looks to me like somebody who doesn't want guitars that are delicate sent around the world mm. and thus potentially being damaged. So the, the, the depth of the body is one thing, uh, 2.75 inches, 71 or so millimetres. Yeah. Uh, tell me. So that was what it originally was in 1960. Mm -hmm. It changed to 2.5 inches. Because of Chet Atkins? Well, it was his signature guitar, so I would, yeah, I would think so. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. So we've got a reduced uh, resonating chamber from that point yeah. of view. But uh, this guitar has been made with a far thicker top. And this is, in, this is something that happens with guitars that are being produced now across the board. This isn't just Gretsch, this is everybody. 
I believe that they're killing the musicality of the instruments in order to save money on returns, in order to save money on things going wrong. For example, the, the, this guitar needed a neck reset because it had a, an older joint mm. and it was glued together using high glue, etc. I do understand those issues. You just look at Taylor guitars, for example, where you've got a bolt-on acoustic guitar <laughs> neck, which, you know, if I'd suggested that to my master when I was learning how to build instruments, he would shout at me. But uh, so Taylor's bolting these necks on, but they're still making incredibly mm. musical instruments, very lightweight, very resonant. Uh, th the, the music comes first in that case. In this case, it's not. They want a guitar that is more solid, less likely yeah. to fall apart. And this is the thing that horrified me. Let's have a look inside. Uh, <laughs> This is the uh, the vintage Gretsch 6120T serial number. This is the 14th guitar they made, and we do have a rather large uh, cable rattling around inside, which is uh, not ideal. Look at the bracing. And there's the bracing. Uh, the pickups are very very cool. These are the single coil pickups, and we'll talk about them in a, in a minute. But uh, it's a bit dusty, it's a bit old, and it's fine. As soon as you go into this one... It's interesting to know how clean this this is on the inside, though, isn't it? You know, you know just construction-wise on the inside. Oh, there's no glue, there's no squeeze-out. Yeah. Uh, it's, all, it's all lovely, it really is. And then we go to this. It's a different type of construction. Immediately, and, and visible from, it, from outside, you can see glue. Uh, squeeze out and and everywhere and I understand things are made to a budget I mean <laughs> yeah you've got spatters of glue your uh, brace has been done on the wrong side ie um, you can look at the grain pattern on this bracing here it's slab sawn rather than quarter sawn and that is just wrong okay again we've got cables floating around but as I come around Look at that! They have essentially turned this into a solid body guitar by shoving a massive post underneath the bridge. The way that an acoustic guitar works is you strum the strings delicately, the whole thing resonates. The, the, the vibration gets pushed out to the sides, the sides push it to the back, the back goes and the whole thing vibrates. Uh, they've basically put a violin style signpost here, which is something I have done in the past on certain guitars when I want them to act like a solid body. They don't want this to act like a solid body. They're advertising this as a Chet Atkins mm. acoustic guitar. They've turned it the other way around. A violin, you are constantly, constantly driving the sound using your bow, okay? If you are not imparting a huge amount of pressure on the strings, you get no sound. Mm. Not only is this guitar thicker, top and back, and I'm, ass I'm assuming sides as well, uh, the, 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 the material they've used, uh, but they've also tied the whole thing together in such a way as to turn it into an acoustic, uh, into an electric style guitar yeah. with less resonance and volume. Now, if the point is to make an electric guitar that you know, that is solid and, you know, you're not going to ever have any issues with, uh, you know, the top caving and whatever. You know, this, the old one, top hasn't caved in. I'm really in ranty mode today. Yes, yes you are. Manufacturing wise, it's stunning. It's a really good looking guitar. Oh yeah. Really good looking, really well put together. Um, apart from loads of glue splatter, it's not going to fall apart and it's going to sound like it sounds forever. Which is fine, and, and in the end, I suppose that's all the we should go well. into Fight me in the fight me in the corner. We could go down the rabbit hole of, you know, this for pickups that make the difference sound-wise, and that's where all the, the tone comes from electrically. But not you know, all. Start a fight in the comments. Fighters in the comments. Ah! <laughs> pickups are a huge part of this. But what I'm arguing against here is the fact that it is not. It is it's not, not an true to representation. No. It's not no. true to what the guitar should be. And it's not even true to what this type of guitar should be. This was made in 1954. There are obviously some spec differences. Chet Atkins changed his uh, uh, ideas yeah. uh, over time. Oh, look at the underside of those pickups. That is an incredible oh, nice. 
um, mechanism that we'll talk about in a second for adjusting the pole pieces. The, you can see that the bracing is quarter sawn. There is some glue squeeze out, which I'm not surprised about, and I'm not saying that all guitars were made absolutely perfectly. Uh, I'm not a vintage um, apologist or uh, idealist. I don't think that everything that is, is old was made better. But, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. It doesn't have to be perfect inside. Yeah, we've still got some uh, evidence of when it was just band sawed out and left rough at that <laughs> edge, which is, which is fine. But inside the new guitar, okay, we've got the filtrons, we've got loads of, uh, uh, that's not actually glue squeeze out. Do you know what that is? Is that polishing compound? Yeah, it's polishing yeah. compound or um, where they've been wet sanding it and flat sanding it and let mm. the inside of the guitar get wet. <laughs> okay, that's worse than glue squeeze out. <laughs> that's actually genuinely a, 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 an issue, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that brace is actually uh, cut on the uh, uh, cut on the piss, basically. But anyway, today's money it would cost three thousand four hundred twenty-five pounds. Okay, three and a half so grand. Yeah, in nineteen fifty-four money. Considerably more than you know the other offerings. Yes, other but brands. also a third of the price of a uh, a Gretsch custom shop. Which is about yes. eight, ten, nine, ten grand. Yeah, nine, ten grand. Okay. Yeah. So, the equivalent guitar today is going to be a custom shop. Yeah. Basically, we don't have one of those for you. It's not on daily guitar draw. Initially, obviously, this is the first run. We've got these uh, single coil pickups. You saw the incredible mechanism. Each of these, those two screws there, uh, adjust. Um, you've got three sections of adjustment. Well, you um, no, you, you can individually adjust each pole. But um, they're, they're, they're pairs, so I'm assuming they rock? Um, I don't think they rock. It's, it's just an odd, okay. odd configuration. So, single coil, this is obviously pre filtertron What are these pickups called, Sam? Uh, Dynasonics. Dynosonics. I love it. You've got a very sexy airfoil uh, on the vintage guitar. Uh, the modern... It's all right. Yeah, it's about the same. It's just not as delicate looking, is yeah, it? Yeah, for somehow it isn't. And we've got the, the tortoise shell, well, faux tortoise shell. Um, yeah. Pick up riser rings as well. Yeah, here we go. I do like those things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a very pretty thing. Okay, so filtertrons were invented. Also in 1954. Also in 1954. So the same year that. Uh, our guitar was made, filtertrons were invented. They are they are humbuckers. They are they are indeed humbuckers. They yes. are humbucking. But yes. I say around two thirds the output of a of a PAF. So PAFs I think around six, six and a half K. They're they're pretty low output, but they work in the same way as a normal humbucker. Okay, and Seth Lover did the normal humbucker around about the same time. Yes. Kind of a lot of people think that, that Gibson, Seth Lover, invented humbuckers first, but they didn't. A guy called Ray Butts, um, who worked with Fred Gretsch, invented the, the filtertrons um, yeah, before Seth Lover designed and, and made the PAFs. But unfortunately for Gretsch, Gibson got to the patent office first. Is there a benefit to the fact that the humbuckers hit the market first? I don't think so. I think it's just a, a case of that's why people believe that Gibson made them first. Okay. But in the end, the fact is that uh, if that humbuckers are more powerful, more rocky. Mm. But yeah, technically, the humbucking pickup was not invented probably by either Gibson or Gretsch. Basically, I think there's a very good chance that somebody else actually invented it oh, first, yeah. but it, it was popularised by Gibson and uh, and by Gritch by using the filter trans etc. I mean, yeah. okay, let's have a quick look. So of course we've got this fantastic cast aluminium bridge and uh, uh, Barry's going to edit in a little bit of footage of how much I love the mechanism here. Yeah. You've got a standard, a fairly standard bolt. Again, this looks hand uh, hand filed. The amazing thing that I love is the fact that you've got the pins in the bit of rosewood and each one of these little bolts locates in that 
which means that the bolt doesn't turn around as you're adjusting height, etc. It's intensely simple and just very, very freaking cool. Um, you don't need to have locked in, epoxied in, threaded inserts in the bridge or, or, or screw this piece into the bridge and then over time it gets loose. This is the rocking uh, bridge. It's relatively delicate, uh, it's relatively small mm -hmm. and that will also uh, help to transmit more tone to the instrument. On the modern guitar you've got a you know, standard tunematic uh, chunky old tunematic bridge and you know this is the homogenization of guitar building really uh, at work so this this Bigsby has been replated uh, in the first period uh, in the first year or so of production uh, it did not have the black infill uh, around the the branding here uh, that enamel happened later mm. and this is also a fixed arm um, uh, on this. This this Bigsby on its own is worth a couple of grand. Mm -hmm. This one of course you've got the the adjustment the arm folds away uh, and obviously it's based on a slightly later instrument. Tell me about the the controls here Sam. Oh yeah the infamous weird Gretsch controls. So this one I guess in comparison to the, the modern reissue this is relatively simple. <laughs> <laughs> We've got... For one, it has a tone control. Yes, yeah. So we've got a standard three-way toggle switch. Then we've got a neck volume and a neck... Uh, sorry, neck volume and a bridge volume. Mm -hmm. Pretty standard. Master tone. And you've also got a master volume. Uh, so, basically, the first time I actually got uh, down and personal with a Gretsch guitar, it was uh, the Monkey Wrench guitar. Uh, Dave Grohl played it on the uh, Monkey Wrench video. It was... Uh, Pat Smear's guitar and mm -hmm. it was at an auction. It was incredible. To the thing, this is a Japanese made um, 1990s Gretsch White Falcon. It's had some modifications. It's not entirely stock. It came with a Bigsby, for example. Um, this is a 50s uh, Cadillac tailpiece that uh, Pat Smear had put on. This is Pat's guitar. Pat Smear was rhythm guitarist with Nirvana. I'm going to pick it up now. Hold on. Stop talking about it. With Nirvana and then uh, Foo Fighters on their second album because famously um, the first album was essentially uh, a demo that Dave just recorded himself. That amp. I've just kicked Gary Moore's amplifier. <sighs> and I'm sitting there looking at all this stuff going, yeah. I should have spent a little bit more time with Gretsch's before I played this incredible guitar. So, as with this, we've got a master volume, and then a individual master volume. Yeah. Looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Neck volume, bridge volume. Yeah. yeah. Same as that. Standard three-way toggle switch for your pickups, and then instead of a tone knob, you've got a tone switch. Well, let's uh, <sighs> remove the flexibility by adding an even more expensive. Uh, yeah bit of uh, hardware. It's a weird setup. So middle position you've got just your standard standard pickup sound. Nothing nothing happening there. Up you've got essentially a fully rolled off tone circuit. So as if you'd yeah completely rolled off for tone control if it were a knob. Then in the bottom position you've got a, a slight tone roll off. So kind of a, a middle ground, if you will. Um, Why have we taken away the flexibility of... It's strange, isn't it? Same as I thought with uh, the master volume control is, you know, instead of having to adjust your tone to a certain point, it's, it's, you've, the idea is you've got a kind of a preset. Yeah. I imagine that's the thought behind it, but... I would like presets and... Yeah, a, yeah. And a tone control. Um, interestingly, so we've got a, a horseshoe inlay, moving on. Uh, the horseshoe is upside down, which I always thought was unlucky. Uh, what it actually means, uh, if the horseshoe is uh, facing up, it's catching all the luck and storing it for you. If it's facing upside down, it's spreading the luck onto the guitar, apparently. <laughs> the fingernail inlays on there, uh, these are hand engraved 
Western. Uh, Western celluloid. Tuners, we've got Grovers on the modern the Yeah, modern that's guitar. another thing that adds yeah. a lot to the weight. Sealed um, tuners. Sealed, solid Grover tuners. Nice open back. Gold plated as with everything else. Yeah. Can we appreciate the strap buttons? I've always loved Gretsch strap buttons. They're just, it's good design. You know, they, they look cool. And also, so all you've got is a bit of threaded, a bit of all thread that's been, yeah, put into the body itself. And then, yeah, you've just got these little aluminium buttons that you then screw onto your strap so you, know, you don't have to mess around trying to your get your strap Your straps strap don't face. fall off. No. It's just easy They're and just, it's, it's genius. Yeah. It really is. I love it. Scale length is the same, 25 yep. and a half inches on both of them, which is interesting. We would have yeah, assumed it I would mean, be a shorter scale. That's, you know, fenders were, were kind of, I guess, known at the time for being a bit longer than usual. And obviously this matches up to a, to a fender scale length. Something else that should be pointed out just quickly, it's so heavy in comparison, <laughs> uh, this neck is glued to the top all the way down to there, so if this neck ever did need a neck reset, that would be an absolute nightmare to, uh, mm. uh, to replace. The, uh, the, uh, the fretboards are ebony, the, the materials are all basically the same. Yeah. Uh, the construction is relatively similar. It is still an apples and oranges thing. Yeah. Uh, if price, if if these were priced at the same price, which one would you choose? Uh, hell, we haven't even mentioned the nitro versus oh, yes. ultra thick poly. That's another debate. That's another debate. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe. Uh, let us know what you think of this kind of video. Uh, do you want to see more waffle along these lines? Uh, Matt is walking in having just finished his lunch, which uh, Sam has uh, now completely missed. You're just going to have to work through now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We appreciate your support. And uh, hey, have a good one. See you soon. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Ta